It's nearing the end of the year, and that means the season of giving is upon us. You all have given me so much support this past year, so I thought it was about time that I return the favor with a little gift of my own. But not just any gift. No, today I give you all the gift of knowledge. After all, give a man a Pokemon, and he has a Pokemon. But teach a man to catch a Pokemon, and he now knows how to catch Pokemon. Nailed it. Now, I hear ya. Charlie, I already know how to catch Pokemon. That kind old man who forgot to drink his coffee taught me. You just gotta lower their health to make them easier to catch. And while that may technically be true, lower, easier, those are qualitative words. And as every STEM professor has ever told me, are therefore worthless. And also, this guy was lying to you about the whole coffee thing. In the original Japanese games, he's just drunk. Is that the kind of guy you want to trust to teach you such a valuable skill? I didn't think so. What I'm trying to get at here is that today, I'm gonna break down all the math behind capturing a Pokemon. So that the next time you run into like a shiny or some really cool encounter in your randomizer Nuzlocke, you'll be ready. Let's start with a little excerpt from the Bulbapedia article on the topic, just to give you a sense of what it's all about and what I had to read to be able to explain it all to you. Richard, you got my, you got my note cards ready? <clears throat> For a constant capture probability P, the probability P of R that a player can capture the Pokemon with no more than R tries is this thing. Note that this is the cumulative probability function of the random variable r, which has a geometric distribution, the expected value of... <laughs> yeah, so it turns out looking behind the curtain in games like this gets complicated and boring fast. And the deeper you go, the more comatose you get. So, instead of going into every little detail, I'm gonna try to explain as much about the mechanisms behind capturing a Pokemon in the games while keeping it as light and breezy as possible. And so, after that ironically long intro, welcome to a way too brief explanation of the Pokemon capture formula. Richard, hit that intro. If we want to understand how exactly the game determines if you're going to catch that Rattata you found, all we need to do is break down the formula behind it. Now, I want you all to brace yourselves. It looks pretty scary, but remember, it's just a mathematical equation. It cannot hurt you. All right, I'm going to put it on the screen now. Ready? There. Y'all hanging in there? You're all still good? <laughs> awesome. See, that wasn't too bad. Oh my god, there's two. All right, let's break this thing down. This second equation here, it won't be important until later, so we're just gonna throw it off to the side. Not a factor, forget about it. In this equation here, A represents the modified catch rate. Basically, every single Pokemon has an assigned catch rate, which is why you can catch a Pidgey no problem, but that Mewtwo took you an hour and a half and cost you two DSs. This formula here just, well, just modifies it. Easy as that. Also, I should note that this formula is specific to generations three and four. Every two generations or so, Game Freak likes to refine these formulas a bit, add in a few new variables for new mechanics, yeah, stuff like that. However, with the exception of weirder games like Legends Arceus or the Let's Go games, they all work basically the same way, and this one is the easiest one to explain. We got a bunch of variables here that makes it seem super complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward. HP max represents the maximum HP of the Pokemon you're trying to catch, and HP current represents how much HP it actually currently has. Here, we just multiply the Pokemon's max HP by three, then subtract twice the current HP from it. Why these multipliers? Well, I don't know, I'm an engineer, not a mathematician. I don't worry about proving things, I just take people's words for it. The rate, as I briefly mentioned before, is a number that represents how hard a Pokemon is to catch. The lower the catch rate value, the harder the Pokemon is to catch. Most legendary Pokemon have a rate of 3, and any easy Pokemon like Caterpie or something has a catch rate of 255, and everything else lies somewhere in between. 
Again, I don't know why this is the scale they chose, probably some confusing computer science thing. But you know what? Let's actually research that and see if we get... Oh. Nah, screw it. We don't got time for any of that. We're moving on to the ball bonus. The ball bonus comes from the type of Pokeball you're using. There are way too many Pokeball types in the game for me to go through every single one of them, so I'll just touch on a couple of highlights. A regular old Pokeball has a bonus of just one, an Ultra Brawl has a bonus of two, the Master Ball has a bonus of 255, which is basically a guaranteed catch, and the Dusk Ball has a bonus of three in caves or at night. This is probably the strongest commonly available ball type in the game, assuming you've met one of these two conditions, which, you know, pretty easy to work around. Then we just divide this whole section by three times the maximum HP again, and then finally multiply that by the status bonus. This bonus is one for any unstatus Pokemon, a 1.5 if they are paralyzed, poisoned, or burned, and a two if they are asleep or frozen. Confusion does not count as a status in this instance, so it doesn't get a bonus here. But that's actually good news, because it means if someone tried to catch you right now, they wouldn't have as easy of a time of it. This whole formula here will get you the modified catch rate. Again, a higher number here means it's easier to catch. I know that was kind of a lot in a short time, so here are the biggest takeaways. Since this whole part is divided by three times the maximum HP, Pokemon with a higher maximum hit point value are just naturally harder to catch. So while Waylord and Gligar might both have a catch rate of 60, Waylord is going to be a bit harder. Also, the single factor that has the largest bearing on whether or not you'll catch a Pokemon is usually the status, believe it or not, since it's the only factor out here that doesn't get divided by the maximum HP. So your best bet to catch a tricky Pokemon is to put it to sleep, or I guess manage to freeze it. If you don't have a way of putting it to sleep, paralysis isn't bad either. Burn and poison are also helpful, but risky, since they might kill the thing you're trying to catch. And remember, the number one rule of Pokemon, you can't catch it if it's dead. This second formula that we threw out earlier is actually pretty straightforward, even if it does look absolutely insane. Basically, you take this one real big number here and divide it by whatever you got for A. Then you take the square root of that number, then you take the square root of that number, and then you divide this really big number by whatever you got from that, and you get B. Great! Now what's the point? You know how Pokeballs do that funny little thing where they'll pretend to shake three times and you think you've finally caught that Mewtwo, but then it breaks out anyway, immediately wakes up and uses Recover to get back to half health, and then you throw your DS and embed it three to four inches into the drywall? Well, that's all thanks to B here, and a little thing called Shake Checks. Whenever you throw a Pokeball, the game generates a random number from 0 to 65,535. Why that number? Again, I don't get paid enough to care. If the random number the game generates is greater than or equal to B, the Pokemon breaks out. If it's lower, it shakes. After four successful shakes, you've got yourself a Mewtwo. Now you can go dig your DS out of the wall, but watch out for that fiberglass insulation that might be on there. It can be a pain. I don't, I don't know that from personal experience or anything. No, no, shut up. Looking at the formula like this actually reveals a few interesting tidbits. Mostly the fact that 99.9999999% of the tricks your friend Johnny told you on the playground in third grade were completely fake. You hear that, Johnny? We caught your lying ass. You've been exposed by the power of math, and it was righteous. First of all, the obvious thing you might notice, there's no variable here for mashing A, or tapping A and then holding B, or tapping B in time with the shakes, or any of that nonsense. These little tricks and tips are nothing more than lies crafted by that wicked serpent on the playground. No, in reality, they're no more real than ghosts or Bigfoot or anything. Just a little story made up by some over-imaginative kid. And if that made you mad, buddy, you're on the wrong channel. Second, I've often heard that the level difference between you and the Pokemon you're trying to catch makes a difference 
Yeah, it doesn't unless you're using a nest ball or something. I've also heard that the exact HP of a Pokemon you're trying to catch doesn't matter, just the color. That's also not true. The color is just a helpful tool to see when you've got something below half or 20% health. There's probably a bunch more lies that Johnny has tried to spread to the masses over the years. But remember, if it's not in the formula, it doesn't exist. And that just about brings this lesson to a close. I know I didn't talk about things like how in Generation 5, Pokemon from the Dark Grass are harder to catch, or how in Generation 8, they sort of added a thing that makes higher level Pokemon harder to catch based on how many badges you have to prevent you from breaking the game with the wild area. But if I went into every little detail, then it wouldn't be a way too brief explanation now, would it? I only bring them up here so people don't flood my comment section with a bunch of, um, actually, in Generation 8, they changed it, and yeah, yeah, you know. Instead, why don't you flood the comments with some more Pokemon mechanics that you'd like to see me break down. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, Pokemon is literally all just math. So, if there's a mechanic in the game that you could think of, then there's a way too long Bulbapedia article for me to slog through and then summarize with a healthy helping of jokes. But until I see you again, don't forget to take it easy. Oh, and uh, subscribe if you like the video. That's what YouTubers are supposed to say at the end of these things, right? That I always forget to do. Click the, click the subscribe button, ring the bell, I guess, even though I'm not convinced that that actually does a single thing give the video a, a like. I don't know, what are you supposed to say here? I ruined one of my only smooth outros, didn't I? Ha. <sighs> what? No, no, I got nothing. That's the, that's all I got. I got, that's,